Hi there, you're listening to Unnatural Selection, the show about newsy type stuff and things. My name is George. My name is Tom. And my name is Adam. And with our powers combined, we are Unnatural Selection. Make sure you visit us at our salubrious home on the web, unnaturalshow.com. Um, it's kind of a short show this week. Nothing really mm. happened. So yep. I guess like yeah. probably just talk about some hex debt and then probably mm-hmm. wrap it up in maybe like a type five or what do you guys mm. reckon? Just short, quick show is a good show. Yeah, quick um, show is a good show because I mean, like, not uh, the the things that definitely didn't happen this week mm. have left me the the haggard, scraggly mess that you can see of me on camera. Mm. Like, this mm. is probably the most unshaven and dishevelled I've looked. I think just because I've been miserable. <laughs> mm. I I look great. I can I just you, like you I know look, you guys yeah, you both you guys look like shit, but I shaved today. Like I showered, yeah. went outside. Like Hang on. I'm doing Movember. Okay, whatever. My, buddy. my shittiness, my shittiness. Look, look. Yeah, is is, is Hang deliberate. On. Are you telling me that yep. that is ten days worth of mustache growth, and that's all you got? Yeah, but like the camera, the camera like blends in a bit. You know, it's low resolution. Is so that what it is? Get, get I a mean, bit closer. this is also that's horrifying. Yeah, that this is, is deeply all, disturbing and, and fantastic for an audio medium. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm also on probably like seven days of not shaving. Unintentional, like, pathetic, a depression but, induced um, Movember. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Depression induced Movember and chin member. Like, sure, mm. why not? Um. Oh, what? Sorry, it just occurred to me. News just in. Mm. Uh, Kamala mm. Harris lost the 2024 election. Totally forgot to mention what? that. So. Does that does that mean that, that Trump won the election? It does mean that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, it's not right because one kind of implies like positivity and and good. Like when you hear someone won something, you're like, yeah. yay, good for them. Not off. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah, Trump won. We all lost. Um. So yeah. as of the current count. Um, some of the results are still being tallied, but the um, official count as of time of recording is Trump with 312 electoral votes. Um, he needed 270 to win Harris with 226. Um, she officially lost all of the battleground states, um, mm-hmm. being Nevada, Arizona, um, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, North Carolina. And yep. is that all of them? Was there another one? Uh, bad. She also yeah, lost the popular vote bad. by about yeah. three and a half million votes uh, as of current tally. So in every which way, uh, more or less a thumping. Um, so mm. she basically came in at 48%, him with 50, 50.5% of the, uh, of the popular vote. So, I mean, not a, people are describing it as a repudiation of the Democrats where it's like, well, it is only within a few points but like having lost all of the battleground states, it does feel a bit like, um, yeah, pounding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and, and having a, and having a swing in what are meant to be non battleground states towards like the Minnesota as well. Yeah, very yes, embarrassing yeah. when um, the vice presidential candidate being Tim Walls um, <laughs> struggled his, to deliver his, his own home state of which he is currently governor. That is, mm. that is not good. Even, even yeah. states like New Jersey, which are like, you know, pretty solidly, um, uh, democratic strongholds like came in at, you know, 55%, you know, compared to like 60 or 70% that they normally yeah. come in. So I think the problem was, um, are you guys ready for my very technical yeah, vote analysis? Say, the, the one problem? The, the, the only one. You can, the, you can explain this in one single problem. Okay. Oh, this is going to be great. All right. I am seated, as the children would say. Are you ready for a hot take? Okay. Um, this is my very technical analysis of the of the vote and how it went down. Mm-hmm. Is um, Too many people <laughs> voted for him <laughs> and not enough people... Yeah. Voted yeah. for her, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh-huh. and not uh, enough people it, in the right places, especially. Yeah, we should, and voted we should and for her. Ca- trying so. to score as many points as possible mm. while uh-huh. also preventing the other yeah. guys from scoring, from scoring as, point. as many points. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, they, and she failed and to do that. So she, that's, why, we, that's the reason that she lost. Before we actually talk about risks, <laughs> can I also just point out? Yeah, Robert Kennedy and Jill Stein both had about six hundred, nearly seven hundred thousand votes each, and they cool. officially dropped out. Yeah, <laughs> like, how are they still? Anyway. Robert well, Kennedy had dropped out, and I think Jill Stein. Jill Stein was still in. I think. Okay, but Robert um, Kennedy got six hundred and seventy-six thousand. So votes. this is so he did secure ballot access for a number of different states before he dropped out of the race. So you drop out of the yeah. race, doesn't matter. Your name's still on the ballot. People can yeah. 
fill it uh, in. It's like how dead people have been on yeah. the ballots and stuff. But also, isn't there a, a, a like you know? It's always hard to tell how much of this is memes because I'm like, mm. God, I hope you haven't fucked your like thrown your vote away like this. But where people you can f- like, there's a there's a free text field essentially mm. where like you know if the person you, you can write someone in. For, isn't on the ballot you could write someone in i I hope this person was joking and it was a really good photoshop but someone wrote like joe biden in there being like (laughs) you're not allowed to retire essentially like i'm I'm, I'm throwing your hat in the ring but um yeah so like anyone could have written rfk jr anywhere you can write him in like it um yeah yeah. you super want to throw away your vote um Yeah, I don't know why you would bother to do that in America where voting is not mandatory. Like, I don't understand the point of going and standing in line to, like, fuck you, the system. It's like, couldn't you say fuck you to the system from your couch while taking a bong hit? Like, I don't know why you need to go I mean, to a community center to say fuck you to the system on an on an anonymous okay. ballot that no one's ever going to see. Like, uh, it's just nah, it's you got to You got to take a photo for the Twitter clout. That's what it is, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. for, for um, the great gag. So a lot of commentary going on this week coming in Fast and Furious. It's funny that um, Uh on the day of the election, everyone's like, oh, it's neck and neck. It could go either way. It's a fucking coin flip. Nobody knows. And then the day after is like, fucking told you so. Democrats, we had such a (laughs) piss sweet campaign. Everyone knew it was fucking dog shit, bro. And it's like, well, hang on. Where were you 72 hours ago before people were headed into the polls? Mm. Everyone's like, yeah, we fucking knew it, bro. Fucking lazy. Yeah. So... I think the thing with a, a, an event like this is it confirms everyone's priors. So the people on the left are going, she wasn't left enough. The people on the right were going, oh, she didn't appeal to the right enough. The people who are Muslims are going, she didn't appeal to Muslims enough. The people Latino is going, she didn't appeal to Latinos enough. And it is true that she lost, like, the swing towards Trump, you know, was palpable in in members of the Latino community. It was palpable in, you know, young men swung overwhelmingly to Trump in greater numbers than women, young women swung to Kamala Harris. You know, you can, you can sort of pick any of these different factors and go, Oh, it's because they didn't have a Palestinian speaker at the conference. And you know, the Muslim vote left them in droves and that, you know, like you can tease out any of these one things, but like ultimately we're looking at an environment where inflation has been high. Prices are still high. People are hurting. They're not feeling like the economy is good. And like Bill Clinton once said, it's the economy, stupid. And I think it would have been hard for any incumbent to have won an an election, especially given that she only had 107 days to run. Now, I think the I think we one thing we can all agree on is that it's Joe Biden's fault, right? Like surely, <laughs> surely we can all agree. That, and I remember saying this at the time, people were like, oh, you know, like Joe's out, Kamala's in, like it's going to be fucking fantastic. I think I remember saying on the podcast at the time, like, yeah, well, we'll see if it was enough time to actually like mm. get her to victory. And if he shouldn't have stepped stepped down a month ago when yes. when he first had that disastrous debate and they first they spent the first three and a half weeks going, who are you going to believe me or your lying eyes? <laughs> and it turns out it emerged mm. on Pod Save America this week, the first time I heard this stat that um, their internal polling at the time had Biden um, losing like handily to Trump and that they reckon the internal democratic polling said that they reckon Trump was going to pick up 400 electoral seats. He picked up 312 in the end. So whilst they saw all of that, they had all of those numbers and then they spent another month shitting all over Kamala Harris saying she's not ready. You know, we still reckon Biden can win. And they were sitting on that kind of information. That's infuriating to me because it's like a month that they could have spent it's, not yeah. piss farting around trying to lie to the American yeah. public as to it's, what, what was going on. It's and they could have spent it in, trying to yeah. win. It's at best some insane denial at worst, some like negligence. Negligence. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. Um, yeah. and you know, I think, you know, it seems like it's to Harris's credit, I think, that she went from, you know, 20, 30 points down on some of these issues like the economy and, you know, um, favorability and things like that and managed to claw her way up to a coin toss in 90, whatever it was, 100, 109 days. Like that is an incredible feat. No mm. one has ever run a presidential, raised so much money in such a short amount of time. I think she raised a billion dollars within 90 days. Um, like that was the whole yeah. um, 26, um, the whole um, 2012 campaign in total, I think each campaign raised a billion dollars. So, and that yeah. wasn't that long ago, right? So, um, Money well spent. That, that, yeah, I know. That, and the thing is, 
So in this battleground states where they were targeting all of the, all of this messaging, she did better than the national swing, but there was a national swing against her. That's what I mean. So in the battleground states where they were contesting it, you know, they were within, they got it down to from a six point swing down to a three point swing against her, but it still wasn't enough to win. And people, you know, they were saying, oh, you know, late, late deciding voters are breaking towards Kamala, all this sort of stuff. That's great. But they just didn't have enough time to make up the difference between, you Mm. know, what was happening nationally, which is, as we discover, a six point, basically a national six point swing against Harris um, and for Trump. And she just didn't have, didn't, didn't have the time or the momentum to be able to pick it up in time for the, um, mm. for the election, which is sad because I kind of feel like if, if they'd had another, another couple of months, like mm. I think they probably could have, they probably could have clawed it back. I don't know. Possibly. It, it, I think, it, yeah, I, I guess it, it would have clawed back in some areas and not in others, which is Well, where, that's the thing. Like, yeah, it doesn't matter if you, if you lose vote share in New York, that's, you know, you know, whatever, 60% Democrat. Anyway, you can, you can, you can afford to lose five, eight points in New York, right? It's, it's all about the battleground states. And she just didn't perform there. She lost, you know, lost with Latinos, lost with young men, lost with black men, lost with, it's just the, the, the democratic vote was down 15 million votes from last time. Mm. Right. And the the Trump vote was down, but it wasn't down by as much. I think people were pretty pissed off about the election. She's an incumbent. She's part of the administration. And so they took it out on her. Um, you can you know, talk about the fairness or not of that, but that's what they did. I, I just, I don't understand. Like, I can't get in the headspace of someone who votes for Donald Trump, man. I, I know we've spent oh, nine years doing this, yeah. but I just don't fucking get it. After everything we know, you know, he's, bound, he's been found liable for rape. He's a convicted felon. Like the awful, horrendous shit that he and his followers say about other races and women and various minority groups. Like you just think that yeah, Americans would be smart enough not to vote for someone like that. But I, I saw yeah. this article that was making the rounds from 2018, which was making the rounds again in lieu of his election win. And, um, and the title, which sort of says it all, is like the cruelty is the point. Basically, yeah. that's the thrust of it. It's, it's, the point is... To, you know, to frustrate the liberals, to drink liberal tears, you know, to, to, you know, fuck with the lefties, to go, to be anti-woke, to be anti, you know, because that's the thing that you want us to do is like treat people fairly and with respect. And so that is the exact thing that we will not do. (laughs) Um, And they revel in it and they joy in it. And I think that for a large contingent of, of the American public, that is just, it's not, it's not ignorance. Like I suffer from this mental disease where I think, um, if people are just given the facts and they're presented in a way that's intelligent and cohesive with a, a narrative through line, then they'll see what the correct thing to do is and then do it. And Hell that no. is obviously not the case. <laughs> well, no. if, if we've learned anything from the last nine years, it's like, that is not true. There is, no. There are people for whom that is true. Yeah. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. But, but for everyone else, they just go fucking like that guy and he makes the other team cry, t- you know, shit blood. So that's, uh, that's the guy I'm voting for. Cause he, cause he um, shits all over the people that I hate. Yeah. What's your, what's your thoughts, Tom? Any, any sort of oh, well, general I mean, sort of causes or. or oh, I, I see. That's the thing. I've, I've been doing a lot of thinking this week. Um, like, cause I know, you know, you, you obviously we talk outside the show. Uh, our, our, huh? uh, our little group chat was lively on election mm. day and then mm. also afterwards. Mm. Um, but yeah, I've ha- had sort of a lot of, uh, thinking about it and I've been canvassing a lot of sort of opinions from various, uh, various people and groups as to how they feel it all went and causes and all those sorts of things. You're and focus- I think you're, you're focus yeah. grouping. Well, kind of, except to no one, to, for myself. <laughs> I'm both in the room asking the questions and behind the two-way mirror. Um, <laughs> anyhow. Um, uh, where was I going with that? Oh, yeah, but, like, you know, that first and foremost, the, the major cause here, the people that, like, what we should blame mostly are all the people who voted for Trump. Yes. <laughs> like, you yeah, know, 100%. people are always looking at, uh, and I know and, and I was guilty of this as well, you know, seeing those... 700,000 apiece votes for third parties. Like, mm. uh, yes, one of them was for Robert F. Kennedy. So actually, no, you should feel bad as well. I take mm. that back. But when people talking about voting for third parties or people deciding not to vote mm. out of some of these sort of areas, the problems, and I have thoughts on those too, but yeah, it kind of sets aside the like 
overwhelming group of predominantly white men yes also white women it seems because i yeah. think there was and, uh, yeah, the a majority white of white women yeah. to, to trump um because yeah the, when people talk about like oh women white voted people. overwhelmingly <laughs> for, for harris it was well women of color yeah predominantly and and that when you break down those statistics um yeah it was yeah, like, nine, like 90, all the plus, people, 90 percent plus you know yeah. african-american women voted for harris like it was yeah like all the people something percent yeah yeah all the predominantly white people who voted for trump just earnestly just mm. straight ahead the main problem because yeah you 100%. were staring down the bar the barrel of the 21st century nazi party and yeah. you went yes please yeah either like, either in spite of or because of that pulled the lever yes. for the nazi party like that yeah. is unforgivable like, uh, there was a great onion headline which said something like um, talking about which minority group is going to be to blame <laughs> for, for the election results. Yep. Like people, you know, like early results are in for Latino males to be, to, to, to be the <laughs> ones to blame, you know, like that sort of stuff. Yeah. It was so funny. Because, yeah, I know like we talked about like, I, I know it still baffles me to a degree of like, yeah, how such a a high proportion of like Latino people would vote for trump given he wants to deport yeah given that like, his opening statement in 2015 was them. mexicans are rapists <laughs> yeah all that sort of stuff and when you know the i know the 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 gains in uh like in the in the muslim vote are a little more complicated given what's going down in, yeah, in still, Gaza and all that sort of stuff it's still like he tried to ban yes, you thank you <laughs> like, he tried to ban there as well a, a, your religious so, group from entering the country yeah like so you, that you know like breaks my brain as well but i think that leads into a, a bit of my second point uh that i wanted to touch on when you said george earlier that uh you know everyone's been calling this a bit of like an indictment on the democratic party yeah. on, on the democrat party even though that was only like a couple points in it but i feel mm. the context is important that it's a couple points in it against the nazi party <laughs> that's a good point and to be down a few points <laughs> from the nazi party yeah. but whose fault is that indictment on you but but like to your point earlier whose fault is that is mm. that they people blame the democrats for not winning but they don't blame the trump voters for voting trump you know what oh. i mean like there, there's think, a, like oh kamala harris could have been like more left or more centrist or like yeah i agree i personally didn't like seeing her swanning around with liz cheney whose father i think is the right? antichrist like that's probably not right? a great look but like I don't know. Obviously, they did some message testing and they did some focus group and they were saying, okay, our theory of the case is we're going to go after those middle of the road conservatives that Trump has abandoned and we're going to try and peel off some of those voters in key areas. Like, obviously, there was like, they were wrong, but they had a theory of the case behind it. Now, mm. I personally don't like that, but then you get all these leftist commentators out here saying like, oh, she should have gone like full bro Bernie populist left. It's because the economic needs of these people have been completely ignored and they didn't have anywhere to go. But like, but also that doesn't ring true to me either because like you had all these things where she was promising, you know, first time house deposit. She was promising uh, for first time homeowners deposit. She was promising a child tax credit. You look at the Biden administration and what they did with the child tax credit, with, you know, alleviating poverty, with, you know, various industrial policies mm -hmm. like the CHIPS Act, like the um, Inflation Reduction Act, which had massive investment in manufacturing um, facilities for, you know, various green energy projects in America, which uh, disproportionately benefit um, uh, red counties. You know, like the people who would be the beneficiaries of those jobs of that of that new economy that's being built up would be exactly these kind yeah. of like, yeah. you know, but they're not right seeing their voting. grocery. They're not seeing their grocery bills get any cheaper. So yeah. when you have to think three layers economically into it, then yeah, that's probably not going to resonate that way. Well. Like a lot, of, a lot of that stuff is, you know, any, this is the problem with election cycles: is anything that the Biden administration did would take four to eight years mm. to really mm. have an effect in what you would see as and what the, the people have been calling the real economic impact yeah. and they'll probably see it yeah. they'll probably see it in the second half of the trump term and go what a what a shrewd economic right. manager right. <laughs> it's like that's yeah, yeah. that's a frustrating always, thing about it you're always inheriting your predecessor's <clears throat> economy in a way yeah um yeah but um yeah on your point earlier of like yeah that they're blaming the democrats for not being left enough and why are they blaming all the white people that voted for trump i think that's 
because we didn't expect any better of them. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, you know, you don't expect any better of the, the hordes of white people and, who voted for Trump. And that's how yeah. Kamala was treated during the election campaign as well. Like, her, she was getting serious questions about her policy and how you're going to pay for it. Meanwhile, this cunt's running up a $5 trillion deficit and mm. 40 economists have all signed a public letter saying that her plan was better than his shit. and it yeah, was yeah, yeah, his his yeah. plan you know like his plan to run up tariffs will will destroy the american economy like to put a 60% tariff on all imported goods is going to make those people that voted for yep. a lower grocery bill are going to be really disappointed when their yep. dishwasher is a thousand dollars now you know and yeah. they're paying an extra four to six grand every year yep. usd for their daily goods like that's a, they've just essentially been hit with a regressive tax they in the article that we that i posted about this where they talk about um or you posted rather sorry the the trump's proposed tariffs will hit game as hard they talk about the various um things that will spike in prices laptops could spike by almost 50 percent oh, yeah. game consoles will rise around 40 percent you know like 60 percent tariff on stuff out of china that's where yeah. fucking everything comes from. That's where from. all the electronics, that's where like everything comes of, from. Yeah, a lot so, of things come from there. And Companies yeah, have been clear that if tariffs raise their cost of doing business, which they will, they're going to pass mm -hmm. those costs on to the consumer. And the reason we know this is because of the quote that says, if we get tariffs, we will pass those tariff costs back yeah. to the consumer, yeah, which is the AutoZone CEO. Like, they know the people who pay the cost of the tariffs at the end of the day are the consumers. And it doesn't even account for the fact that China is obviously not going to take all of this lying down and they're going to have retaliatory tariffs because that's what a trade war yeah. is. They're not just going to go, oh, you got us. I guess we won't have an economy anymore. You got us, well, America. Yeah, This literally happened what, during like the first Trump ago. administration. Yeah, the last time he did it. Um, like, and, yeah. and I'm not saying tariffs are all across the board necessarily a bad idea. Well, but, let, let's rewind in case anyone doesn't yeah. fully understand what a tariff is, sure. because like it seems like from what I've seen this week, particularly among Trump voters, mm. they don't know what tariffs are. If but, only yeah, they had a four minute Vox explainer video to break it down mm. for them. Yeah, if only they looked it up once. Or yeah, you're in uh, line at the fucking voting yeah. centre. You didn't have time to Google it then while you're oh. waiting in line to vote. Like just to fucking do a quick Google, just Google from, it. From an anecdotal. Uh, example that I saw someone posting about online, listen to your wife telling you how they work yeah. and then don't get pissy when you suddenly learn how they work after you've voted. Oh, I can't anyway. fucking believe, oh, I can't fucking believe yeah. that the hey. let the leopard out of the cage party means I got bit in the face by a leopard. I can't fucking believe it. Um, yeah, tariffs, essentially, yeah, they're like, they're like taxes on things of like a percentage value on the cost of goods, but and a particular good imported from another, from another country. But they are paid person importing the goods. Yes. So it's not. Yeah, so, sorry, sorry, that came through a little bit garbled. Oh, Hang on. Sorry. That came through a little Maybe. bit garbled there just because of your internet. But yeah, what, what, what Tom's saying is the, the, the tariff gets paid by the people importing the goods. All yeah. right. So the, you know, whoever it is, Best Buy ends up paying more for those computers than they otherwise would mm -hmm. if there were no tariffs in place. And who are they going to charge? Well, they're not just going to say, oh, I won't have any profits now. They're going to turn around and say, okay, well, those extra charges that I've paid for those goods are going to get, you know, tacked on and, and um, sent to the consumer, right? So yeah. that's the way it ends up being regressive. It's because it's about consumption. It's like it's like having another GST. It's like another another mm. goods and services tax, another VAT, whatever they call it, the sales tax in the States. It's like having another, you know, yeah. another 10, 20, 50% just whacked on top yeah. of your goods. And, and the, assumption, just, the assumption is... It affects poor that, people the worst. The assumption is that, you know, the reason why you tariff foreign imports or whatever else is that the consumer will therefore then pick locally produced goods because they are met, should be, in theory, cheaper. But that assumes that you have an industrial base. That assumes to, that and, you're building uh, the things that are yeah. being tariffed. So, yes. you know, if you're building mm. smartphones and you've got a you know, Chevy America, all-American smartphone... Um, then maybe people will buy that instead of, you know, the Huawei, right? But, yeah. but turns out America doesn't have a case. native manufacturing <laughs> no. base for smartphones. Yeah, so what's going to happen is the manufacturing base will probably move out of China to some other Southeast Asian country instead. Like it doesn't, it doesn't mean manufacturing jobs come home to America. It just means they go elsewhere yeah. than China. <laughs> Yeah, right? and, and some of these things only China can do because they've got the supply chains and the expertise and the manufacturing facilities to build all of that. You got, it's very unlikely to get a Vietnamese smartphone because that's not something that they excel at. 
you know, they haven't got the, the whole resources and supply chain there to build that. And it takes many years to build something like that up. It's mm. a very complex, there's a video floating around online about all of the different hundreds of different components that go into a smartphone. And this and this chip gets brought from over here from Taiwan and gets sent here and then it gets packaged into a thing. It's like a whole global supply chain of like dozens of different countries working in cooperation to put all this stuff together to make one thing. And all of those components that go into that thing come from China. So it's like now all yeah. of the inputs to your shit to make the thing that is the value-added product being a smartphone – all of the things that go into making that product are also now more expensive. So it's just like it's just like a nonsensical, dumb, horrendous yeah. policy. And seeing all those people, like you know, because on election day, you know, the, uh, while they're waiting for different vote counts to be coming through, of course they've got reporters on the ground talking to people in line or mm. who who they've just vo like, oh, they've voted to be like, who'd you vote for? So the ABC here in Australia had a whole bunch being like. This person voted for Kamala Harris, and this was why. Or this person voted Trump in 2016, and now voted Kamala, and this mm. is why. But also talking to people who said, "I voted for Trump because like groceries were so much cheaper when Trump <sighs> was in charge." So I want that again. It's like nothing that he's suggesting will do that. Yeah. Um, that it, it is just infuriating to see. Yeah. So, are you, are you better off than four years ago? That's that's yeah. the whole thing. They yeah, had a yeah. narrative that that, and I think this is the theory of the case that makes the most sense to my brain. Yeah. Is that the Republicans had a narrative, the bad, and I don't agree with it. It's not a good narrative. It's a deeply racist, you know, xenophobic narrative. But the yeah. narrative was, your jobs are being stolen by immigrants. Immigrants are flooding over the border, causing crime. You know, stealing your jobs, and um, we're going to bring it back to the economy that it was five years ago. And that was the whole, and they just kept hitting those points over and over again. And that is a much more compelling narrative and story that uh, the out group, mm. right? The politics of fear, that's the out group that we hate, that we don't like. They're the scapegoat yeah. for all the problems, right? Yeah. In, the in, in the 1930s Germany, it was the Jews, right? And, and, the, and, the, and, and there's two parts to that. So there's the other, which is the yeah. Jews or the, in this case, whomever, the, whatever, the whichever minority we're discussing. And then to there is target. Yep. The, the establishment which mm. is, uh, or, or, the, or the left. So mm. there was the communists mm. uh, and the establishment, the people that appeased the, the West in at the end of World War I. Mm. In this case here, it's the Democratic Party and the, the elite. The elite in our own country, the, the enemy within, right? Mm. He literally used the, yeah. the, the Hitler words. Mm. And, so, and I, and, and and if I you, the multi-millionaire, will defeat these elites. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, the man of the people who grew up yeah. a billionaire with a yeah. golden also spoon now, in his mouth. <laughs> Best friends with the richest man in the world. Yeah, yeah, um, all normal the, man of the people stuff. <laughs> that yeah. I think you know. Look, we could. All these things are, are true, but I think yeah. At the end of the day, that that's it. It's it's about storytelling, and for some reason, yeah. and it's interesting. I there's a reason why there's a lot of religious people in America. Mm. They they love a good story, yeah. and, and they love there's a reason why they love a daddy. There's a reason why conspiracy theories take off in America. There mm. is something about their culture. There is something about the American society where you can spin. Uh, there's a conspiratorial brain. I don't know what it is, but like it's the home of the flim flam man. You look at P.T. Like, Barnum. You look at all of these yeah, figures throughout history. Mm. There's a uniquely American, almost like a, a love and a reverence for the huckster, for the con man throughout the american mythos like like it, there's this weird kind of like well just that they, they lean they're, in they're they lean in credulous to, people <laughs> yeah they lean into stories and they will yeah, go yeah. along with it and, and if so, you think about yeah, what was all, the, what all, was the message, you, need. you know the, yeah. the message from trump mm. as grotesque as it was was she's for they them he's for you right that was one of the big ads that they were running oh. you know, a, a really gross anti-trans campaign but but you think about the through line as to what the Democrats, they were making a lot of lofty arguments about democracy versus autocracy and they were talking about fascism and they were talking about, I think what a lot of people didn't hear was how my grocery is going to get cheaper, back to your point, Tom. Mm. And so I yeah, think it was as simple, as, was simple as, and incorrect yeah. as the Trump line was, it was a story and the Democrats didn't have a story to tell back. No. Um, and, and so you know, they ceded and, the ground can, on immigration and the border and yeah. they ceded ground on, you know, various, they, they tried to like be a diet Republican party. And I think people look at that and they go, why would I go diet when I can have the real thing? Like, yeah, you know, that's, yeah, it, it's, and that's, that's, that's the long, that's the long and short of it. Mm. You know, I think, people um, don't need, people don't need, as you said, you can present the facts to people, but yeah. if they're, if they believe 
if we're already believing some other narrative, mm. they're not going to listen to that to, to the facts. And it's there's the also a thing with COVID, it's the same thing with, you know, um, uh, there's another example I thought of, but like, yeah, it, it's a, it's a it's a common trend that you see throughout history and mm. like this is straight out of the populist fascist yeah, the politics of fear works. Bolsonaro, it, it, it uh, works. Bolsonaro, um mm. yeah yeah fear and mistrust are much stronger motivators than hope or reason mm. um it happened in brexit it happened mm. in the the voice referendum here in australia it happened um four years ago with uh well, four years ago, eight years ago with trump mm. um Happened during COVID. These are. It's happened here in Australia, you know, the fear of, yeah. you know, boat people and, you know, asylum yeah. seekers and all that sort of stuff. Like, we, we're, we're not above it either, certainly. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it is. There's a politics of fear. It's also like a lot of commentary around the fractured media environment. I think the fact that a lot of people, you know, are, you know, really, especially in the cohorts of like um, people that aren't frequent voters. So, so there's something they talked about with, on Pod Save America, which I thought was interesting. It's like they have more in common. You, we people listening, you know, people listening to this, have more in common with the far right than they do with the average American voter. Uh, and they said, "What do I mean by that?" Well, it's like most voters are completely unengaged. So the people who are hyper engaged are the people on the on the left and the far left, and the people on the far right. Those are the mm. the groups that are really thoroughly engaged day to day with politics. They're the ones that are actually ironically most informed about what's going on. And then there's this mm. vast swathe of people in the middle who mm. are not um uh, I forget what the term is. It's something like um people who we can depend upon to be voters, right? A lot of people are like low turnout, infrequent voters. They're not engaged in the political process. And because the media environment is so fractured, they're not getting their news. It's not like everyone sits down for NBC Nightly News at four. Like, they're, you know, they're listening to Joe Rogan, they're, especially these like really disengaged voters are not in your traditional, you know, they're in the manosphere. They're listening to Joe Rogan. They're listening to, you know, uh, Ben, uh, what's his name? Shapiro. Uh, ben Shapiro. Shapiro and Jordan P. Mm. Peterson and like, you know, these other comedy podcasts by these right-wing shitheads. Like, that's that's the space that they engage in. They're talking about MMA and they're talking about comedy and they're talking about, you know, like video games. And that's the sort of, that's the space that they play in. They don't have actually a lot of contact with the media environment. So if they're hearing Trump and J.D. Vance and, and you're going on all of these different podcasts and engaging with the Manosphere and they hear nothing from Kamala Harris because they don't watch TV, they don't see ads, they don't, you know, like if they, yeah. they hear nothing from the other side, well, yeah, they're much more likely to buy a line of reasoning from them, even if it is complete bullshit because they've got nothing against which to contrast it. So the Democrats have a problem in that they need to be, they need to try and engage like in an everything everywhere all at once strategy, mm. which is enormously well, expensive. I don't know. I, I, I think, I think the only way like insulated media bubbles, you know, which essentially propaganda mills that of, yeah. uh, you know, filled with people that they just don't have any access to. Like, I don't think even if Kamala Harris got on Joe Rogan, it would have made a difference because you're talking, you're talking about like decades of media brain poisoning that these groups of people have gone through in order to get to that point. So it's like, yeah, if Kamala Harris was there eight years ago in all of those spaces, making her arguments, maybe then you could have won some of those infrequent voters across, but like his ability to turn out people who are disengaged from the process yeah. is disenfranchised just, voters. was is, just, is, is, just is, way stronger the than reason. the Democrats ability yeah. to turn out all of their engaged right. voters. Right. Bernie Bernie Sanders had a good tweet and it was I'm paraphrasing, but it was something like, you know, it should be no surprise that the the, the Democratic Party, which has forgotten about the working class, uh, had the working class forget about them, which you know, I mean this is this but, is the other see, thing. I is don't that agree this with is, that analysis because well, the no, Democratic no, it's, Party it's, ca yeah, yeah, cares but, way more about the working yes, class, has done more for the working class than a Trump administration but, will ever do in a thousand listen, years of darkness. Listen. I understand listen. the argument, but it, like listen, of the two is, options, is, one yeah, is okay, clearly better for the working class. Joe Biden was on the marching line with the, you know, was on the was on the line with the unions. You know, like there's there's a difference. There is a difference. And one is clearly better for the working class than the other. Yeah. So I don't agree with that analysis. That's fine. But that's that's not what I was saying. At the end of the day, this was a, it's class, what happened here was class, class politics and class warfare. There's an interesting article in the conversation, which was talking about this in that, yes, at the end of the day, like there's the same sort of thing with the, with the union movement, not the, not the I shouldn't say at the end of the day, but 
one of the large brush strokes here is that this was class warfare. So again, same thing we were able to say, you know, we talked about before where it's like there's a narrative that the Republicans have. And they effectively were able to target the battleground states where, you know, the people that have swung, the people that swung in these battleground states, they voted for Biden last time and they voted for Trump the time before and now they're voting for Trump again. So these are the, the and the reason is, is that these are the people that I guess they're from a certain class, right? They're white working, well, not white necessarily white, but they are working class people. Mostly, yeah. And by saying your life sucks because the Democrats, mm. it's the same sort of thing as, you know, a hundred years ago where the labor movement was like, your life sucks because the capitalist overlords <laughs> are, you but, know. But the difference is, uh, Adam, a hundred years ago, they were right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, that was the yeah. case. Like that. But I, and I guess like, the reason I'm so, reticent, so, so reticent what I'm, the reason I'm reticent to agree with you is because I think that line of argument confirms my priors, right? I think that the Democratic Party is not populist enough, not left enough. But that, those are all the things that I think. So I'm just like, I'm reluctant to buy into that line of reasoning just because I agree with it. It feels good to me. Like, no, I think, I think, I'd I think like this is more you've got to fight, you've got to fight fire with fire, I think. Because we've seen the same thing in, in every other populist election that's happened around the world. You know, they've, the moderates have tried to stay, try to be the same ones in the room and it hasn't worked. Yeah. You've got to fight fire with fire. I just you've like, you've got to I get down imagine. and. Mm. Imagine if it was Bernie Sanders versus Trump. I still, I don't know if Bernie Sanders, if Bernie Sanders, well, Bernie Sanders is like either. eighty years like, old either. No, like, but the, you know what know, I mean. Like if it was a representative yeah. of the left, you know, someone like an, uh, but not exactly AOC, that yeah. was representing the you know progressive left flank. I think there's a lot of middle of the road voters who'd be scared shitless by that. So Probably. I don't know that that, like, be... that may be a theory of the case. That might be a part of it, but I think it's. As a lefty, also then, I find it really appealing. Anytime I find a line of reasoning really appealing like that, I'm like, yeah, what I think is exactly what went wrong, I kind of want to question it a little bit because it just seems well, like yeah. they it's weren't left about, enough is exactly the sort of thing that you would expect a leftless to, it's not just about to say being, about the Democratic Party. It's not just about being left. It's about saying, having Populist, a narrative. Be, yeah. Being left, but also having a narrative to speak. Yeah. So, yeah. And this is the, this, that's the thing that the union movement did very well yeah, and it cut across um you know yeah. um racial lines and all that sort of stuff really yeah. well because people were united around class and there's more so, of us than there is of them right so yeah i, I, I mean it's, it. it's the same sort of thing but it's just like rather than it being a rational argument around the economic structure of of society mm. now it's just a populist fascist mm. barb which is the same but it, mm. but it's still hitting the same motivators is my point mm. and this is still something we discussed before the show is that the Labor Party, the traditional Labor, you know, union party here mm. in Australia, should be looking at this election. Oh, I would be shitting my pants if I was Anthony Albanese. Learning right from now. it yeah, very 100%. quickly. Oh. Yeah, he should be shitting himself rather than just immediately shoving Trump's balls in his mouth like fucking 30 seconds after the election's called, being like, congratulations, Donald. Congratulations, Donald. Can't wait to work with you. I know. Unrelated. Have Do you to work know? With other countries, but not when they're Hitler 2.0. Unrelated. There's a line that you don't have to cross, Albo, you fucking numpty. Um, well, I, Kevin, I Kevin Rudd's just deleting his tweets. Did you oh, hear yeah. oh, Literally I'm issued a statement cowards. being like, we deleted these to avoid any confusion. It's like, Kevin, you're gone, mate. And like, I hate to inform, I know you like your cushy job over the United States ambassadorship, yes. but you are fucking Fuck gone, me. mate. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, unrelated, I don't know if you know this, Tom, um, in North Korea, if you don't clap loud enough when um, the dictator speaks... Um, you get carted away and disappeared. I mean, so, like, yeah, I don't know if that's enough. the psychological well, effect that's happening here now, but... Uh, I mean, yeah, because be... Trump, Trump has said on camera uh, and recorded that he would like to be more like Kim Jong-un. So, mm. yeah, fair enough. I was so furious seeing Albo and Penny Wong immediately congratulating Donald I have Trump. To. On, I'm like, I have to. But you don't! You Tom, don't win it! Tom, they want you those submarines. 
They want those <laughs> fucking submarines, oh. son. They want the submarines. Oh, I love it. We all talk about like, oh, but what would we have been like in 1930s Germany seeing all this happen? We we wouldn't have stood for it. And like, no, you did. No, no. You just did. We, Elbow, you we just are the did. cowards. Yeah. 100%. You just did. Yeah. Um, I've seen a lot of people making also that uh, that like sort of case for the way the media is reporting on like uh, Israel bombing Gaza, being like, mm. you've all wondered, like, how would I have covered the Holocaust were I there? You, you do it exactly like you are right now. Yeah. You're doing it now. Um, yeah, it's exactly it there. Um, yeah, I don't know. See, Some, mm. something I heard which was interesting was to, talking about political eras as a way of as a lens through which to look at this. Oh, yeah. And which I, which era are we in? The the eras too are. Uh, let's let's roll. <laughs> so we're coming to the end of the neoliberal era, which sort of Ooh. has been. I haven't heard that Taylor album. Which one's that one? <laughs> that's after. Um, that's after Red. Ah, um, gotcha. So. Know. So the neoliberal era, so basically characterized by a willingness to look at, you know, profit and a balanced budget yeah. before anything else uh, has been a kind of pervasive mindset. I'd say probably since Clinton, since the early nineties, he's probably the first Democrat to really, well, maybe as far back as um, old uh, peanut farmer. What's his name? Um, Carter. Carter. Jimmy Carter. Yeah. It was probably the earliest, you know, like iteration of that, a kind of neoliberal type approach which was obviously definitely brought to bear under reagan and then i guess perfected by bill clinton you know it's, that's when that, you realize that, that and but also thatcher like the left that. that's when you realize the left had really kind of like imbibed that neoliberal ideology and, and and was sort of living by it and that's when you see yeah as you say thatcher in the united kingdom but you also see it on the left like in the form of tony blair uh, in the late 90s and stuff as well it was it was this idea that like the left was going to attack to the right and they were going to take the wind out of the sails of the conservatives. And, you know, the, the, the idea was that they'd be unbeatable electorally as a result. And I think what kind of happened is the right kind of kept tacking right and the center left kept tacking right in order to compensate, to you know, and sort of follow like along. And, and that's what happens when we talk about the phenomenon of an Overton window shifting. That's how it happens. Um, is that over decades, basically one party keeps tacking in one direction and the other party kind of follows them. And then the, the window of acceptable discourse has shifted pretty immeasurably over. You look at Nixon in the 70s and he, and he created the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. Like that's one of the environmental, you know, the, that's one of the agencies that's likely to get abolished under a Trump term. It's the same party, Republican Party, right? So in 50 years, they've gone from over here to all the way over here, right? So- yeah. I think it's useful to think of it. So that neoliberal era seems to be ending. People are really pissed off about NAFTA and all these trade agreements that have located manufacturing jobs elsewhere. It's clear that that style of politics, like it worked with Obama, it didn't work with Hillary, it definitely didn't work with Kamala. I think the American left knows it's dead, but they don't know what's next. They don't know what the overarching broader story is. Like, okay, if we're not going to engage in neoliberalism, free trade, you know, global democracy, world, you know, rules-based order. Well, what's next? And I think given that we've got another Trump term coming up, it's probably going to be characterized by his, you know, nativist, America first, protectionist, trade war, like kind of jingoistic approach. And yeah, maybe it's maybe the next era that we're entering into is an America first, you know, mm. era. That's going to be I the mean, new the new kind of overarching narrative of of American politics, and that's yeah. kind of it's obviously well, scary. Like especially if you're a a person of color, especially if you're a woman. Like a lot of the reports that have been coming out this week um, have been really concerning from like a misogyny perspective. Yes, I was going to say that story that yes. uh, they're, they're going to be telling over the next four years is going to be the Handmaid's Tale by the sounds yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, um, America's essentially tacking towards Gilead. Yeah. yeah um, it, Nick it, Fuentes, it's, it's, um, yeah. renowned right winger, um, right wing white supremacist and duffel bag of shit, um, tweeted, your body, my choice forever. And um, shit bags like Andrew Tate have been tweeting a lot of like basically replying to women expressing disbelief and dismay at Kamala Harris's loss, saying things like make me a fucking sandwich. And, you know, like, you know, essentially celebrating rape. Yeah. 
like so yeah, yeah. Is what's if coming you, if ever you and wonder they feel if rape, emboldened to say it if ever you wondered no whether rape culture was a thing like all you need to do is look at andrew tate's tweets right now yeah pretty much um yeah celebrating you know you know the two two um two men walked onto a texas university campus on wednesday before harris made a concession speech with signs that read women are property um, Donald Trump Jr. posted a meme that said Trump arrested for beating two women and then a photo of Hillary, a photo of Karl Noir. Like, yeah. it is it is a a platform of grievance that I think is the fact, you know, ha- how it is being directed at women is, like, incredibly concerning. And I'm very concerned for the permission structure that this creates, you know, the, because you know it's going to be coming through in, like, anti-woke, anti, you know, DEI initiatives, anti you know, anti, which is basically just anti, you know, broadly accepting people of their, you know, no matter where they come from and what they look like. It's basically a, a backlash to that. And it seems like the broader society now feels emboldened to shit all over these minority groups because Trump won. Um, and we're going to see yeah, that. Yeah. The, the masks it's, are off. Yeah. The masks are like, off. We, yeah, this is what pe- they wanted the whole time. They yeah, always pe- were fucking Ku Klux Klan, you know, racist motherfuckers under there. Yeah. There was a, a contingent of them that are just the fucking clan. They never went away. Yeah. And I don't know, people talk about, oh, what happens in the American election doesn't affect here. Like we're already fucking talking about abortion rights in Queensland and like South Australia yeah. and like it's already happening. But anyway, just these these men felt comfortable just to celebrate that they feel they just have entitlement to women's bodies with no fear of the consequences. I mean, N- Nicholas, what's, it, Nick what's his face? Yeah, yeah, um, has been doxxed online. I saw oh, no. it was like, oh, no, just oh, like no. women everywhere have been like, this is where he lives. Mm. There it is. But a thing I find interesting about this is we're essentially seeing um, – a, a Lysistrata situation coming mm. out of this. Um, like the, uh, for those of you who don't know, Lysistrata was a play by, uh, I want to say Aristophanes. Yep. 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 Aristophanes, like ancient Greek playwright, a comedy about uh, all the women of Greece and Sparta um, calling a sex strike with their husbands to stop them fighting wars all the mm. time. Um, it's a very funny play. You should read it. But. Or, or see it if anyone's putting oh, it's it on. Not, but, it's not a laugh a minute, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's all it's, right. It's well, not Veep, but it's it's, it's interesting. Pretty, it's pretty funny. Um, but that's essentially what a lot of women are, are, are advocating for and doing mm. around the world. I think starting in South Korea, um, but they call it the 4B movement. Yeah, that's been um, going on for some time. Uh, but yeah, 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 it's been of, sort of co-opted, um, I guess, in the wake of Trump's yeah. victory. Um, yeah, of just women saying like, I'm just no, no to men. <laughs> just just no to men like sexually uh, relationship wise anything until we have equality like so rather than it being stop fighting wars it's allow me to have dignity and autonomy and be a person so, like, yeah, the stakes very different stakes equally as important um yeah, yeah so and you know what uh, to be honest i don't i don't blame them because I, I, yeah, I wouldn't like, fuck us. I, wouldn't, We're I would be <laughs> fucking terrified right now. Yeah. Um, and I reckon, though, the s- silver lining, silver lining here, is that I've seen a lot of women sharing with each other online, uh, what the best kind of conceal carry guns are in America. Naturally, to just kind the of solution have, to any problem to in defend America yourselves is guns. Yeah. against against predators essentially where i'm like all right don't don't blame you feeling unsafe there but and they're talking about like recommending like hollow point rounds to each other like oh they're God. going into like deep kind of like weaponry that they can equip i reckon this will get us gun control bojack horseman <laughs> they style. Are women yeah like yeah like the bojack horseman bit of a mass shooter is a woman suddenly mm. and all the right wing nut bars are like well women clearly can't be trusted just to have free access to firearms we have to have some sensible well rules. that's how a lot of states and i initially... reckon it's gonna happen <laughs> and that's how uh, you, you joked on, but that is how a lot of states initially got gun control yeah. um, on a state level was when the Black Panthers started arming themselves yeah. and a bunch of white guys got really uncomfortable, uh, uncomfortable going, oh, hang on, that's not exactly what we... Yeah. <laughs> but I <laughs> that's reckon, not what we meant. 
all these fucking white college boy dickheads mm. suddenly not getting any getting any their balls kind of blown se- off and yeah, uh, any yeah. kind of sexual con-, con like you know any kind of sexual congress mm. and that they're all armed and will be hurt the next time they try to fucking grope someone mm. yeah that might actually push them to support some kind of gun control um we yeah, didn't yeah, mention re- that oh, um, the the actual the results so, so we talked about the presidential race the senate obviously the republicans have won the senate they've um, at time of recording they've gained four seats and there mm. might be another one that's uh, that's still up for grabs um it might be possible for the dems to maintain control of the house that's really mm. critical at this stage because if they've got the senate and the presidency if they get the house as well that's a super majority they're going to be able to pass whatever the fuck they yeah. like so the only check on trump's power at this stage will be a majority in the House. So the Dems are currently at 202 seats. Um, the GOP are currently at 213. You need 218 for a majority. Um, and the GOP's gained two seats. Obviously, the Dems have lost two seats. So it could. they're still within striking distance. Obviously, that's still being tabulated. But obviously, you really hope, fingers crossed, for a ha- Democratic House majority. One thing that, that, <laughs> that I thought was fucking crazy is that... North Carolina voters for governor voted for Josh Stein pretty overwhelmingly. So he got um, just under 55% of the vote against Mark Robinson, who was the Republican candidate, who got 40% of the vote. So a pretty resounding victory there. He beat him by fifth, you know, just under 15 points. Um, North Carolina, on a state level, voting for president, voted for Trump. So there's at least 15% of people who went into the voting booth, voted for Josh Stein, the Democrat for governor, and then voted for Trump, the Republican for president. And that blows my mind. Mark Robinson, Mm. by by the way, was the guy who posted a bunch of stuff on nude Africa saying that he was having an affair with his wife and having an affair with his sister-in-law and all this crazy shit. Mm. So it blows my mind that you can get those split ticket voters where they go, I'm going to vote for Trump and I'm also going to vote for the Democrat for governor. Like that just, I don't see how that, what, because there's like a not a sizable 15%. There's like a sort of a half a million people that made that choice. And I'm just like, yeah. I'm so curious about what is happening in that little old noggin of yours. George, <laughs> George it's very simple. It's one word. It's uh, misogyny. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's yep. definitely part of it. Yep. Mm. Um, mm. And, and look, America does, for some reason, they have a fascination with the strong man, the archetype, right? Um, yeah. And Clinton and Harris have both failed. It'd be interesting to see if they get a Republican, like in the future, like a Republican presidential candidate that's actually a the woman. The first that, woman that, that you'll see yeah. in the president's chair will be a conservative woman. The Democrats won't run a woman for another yeah. another couple of election cycles. I think they'll be, they'll be too scared off after their yeah. experience. Um, with uh, um, Kamala Harris and Hillary Clinton in yeah, 2016. Which is yeah. fucking bullshit. It's like, nonsense. I, I but feel like... the, all the problems that they have, none of them have been the candidate's a woman. Candidate's <laughs> like... a woman. Now, the other guy is <laughs> a convicted yeah. felon and yeah. um, has been adjudicated to be found um, liable for rape. Yeah. But, yeah, the, um, the other guy is Hitler, according to his vice presidential, like, running. Yeah, name. according to his generals. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and his yeah, and his VP who called him America's mm. Hitler. That's right. Mm. Yeah, it's just. Well, don't uh, worry. He's he's, yeah. he's already been on a call with Zelensky, so you know, getting on the front foot. Oh, that has, does uh, not uh, reassure has, me has at all. <laughs> has that war ended? It has not. 24, 24 hours. Well, he's yeah, technically not in power yet. He hasn't been inaugurated. I thought he yet, said but, from uh, being elected, <laughs> not inaugurated. Hey Tom, this so, might this might surprise you, but I don't believe Donald Trump was telling clock, the truth. Fox ticking. Um. So. <laughs> So he had a call with Zelensky and I don't know, like this feels like quite not official to do, to be sort of like back channeling foreign policy before you've even taken the office. Like that seems not a hundred percent right. But in any case, Trump had a call with Vladimir Zelensky, the um, president of Ukraine um, Mm. and who turned up, but old buddy, buddy, Elon Musk. Why? Why? I don't know. He's not been allocated any official role in the administration as of yet. As far as I'm aware, he did say he was going to be, um, Trump said he was going to be um, heading up some kind of like government accountability office. And he said he was going to strip. Efficiency, wasn't he? Government efficiency. Yeah. And he said they're going to cut $2 trillion out of a $6 trillion yearly budget. And everyone was like, yay, $2 trillion. I'm like, "Mm, what does that mean? 
But um, yeah, he could easily turned... cut two trillion out. Uh, will it still work well? Is the no. other thing. Well, like, it's easy yeah. to cut money, but to keep it running well, it's like that old joke. It's like I thought you said you could fly, and I didn't say I could fly well. Like, yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, it's very so... odd. Yeah, it's. I don't it's know. Maybe odd. maybe Trump was there with him. Like I know he he spent some time Mar a Lago yeah. the day after. Um, yeah, he spent, he spent doing... the night. Spent the night. Was it like Elon was Gee. like spending the night with Trump on election yeah. night? I'm like, oh wow, you're gonna, making it a, a real celebration. Gonna launch a few rockets of my own. <laughs> hey. um, drop that payload. Uh, the <laughs> right, yeah, that the day, they, the day afterwards, they, they did. <laughs> as Trump was doing a lot of uh, fielding a lot of calls from foreign um, people, you know, sucking and, up, kissing the ring. Yeah. And I wonder whether or not it was just like Trump was in a Trump, um, Musk was in the room or something, and they're like, "Hey, come over here and jump on the call," or whether it was a bit more strategic. But I don't know. I yeah. think it's actually extremely concerning that an <laughs> yeah. unelected official who's yet to take any kind of administrative position, who is also the richest man in the world, who also has business interests that directly coincide yeah. with Russia and Ukraine, is on this call. Like, I actually think that's incredibly fucked and problematic that that's yeah. happening. The guy who owns Starlink which the Ukrainians are relying on for internet access in lieu of all of their internet infrastructure being blown up by Russia is fucked. Like it's, it's just it's it's incredibly on brand. And yeah, Vladimir Zelensky, I gotta love this guy because he absolutely knows how to work the room. So he's talking about, you know, we agreed to maintain close dialogue and advance our cooperation. And he's talking to him about how how much he's looking forward to working together and all the sort of really greasing up Donald Trump for some, some of those um, some of those extra Ukraine bucks. And then he posted a poll on Twitter, obviously, which Elon Musk owns, saying, which at Elon Musk do you like more? One who supports Ukraine or one who supports Russia? And the poll came back 78.8% one who supports Ukraine. So he's basically going, I've focus grouped support for Ukraine for you, Elon. Come have a look. On your own platform. (laughs) On your platform. Turns out, and it's like, obviously the people who who follow Vladimir Zelensky Zelensky, on Twitter, like it's obviously sample bias. The people who follow him are likely to be Ukrainians or people who are engaged with the Ukraine conflict. And so they're, you know, obviously more likely to support him than elsewhere. But I just thought it was interesting. Like he's a really canny, smart guy. But uh, if you look at it, you know, the first comment that's um, that's underneath it is like, basically, we're on to you. America's not your ATM anymore, buddy. Like, get ready. I was like, oh, that's that's dark. That's very concerning. Yeah, that's I, ex- I was that's I was extremely that's concerning. A bunch of J.D. Vance sort of press clips, I guess, prior today, sort of throughout the day, um, because I've watched so well, well but this, is, this is the problem: is Stop I've watched yourself so in much. What are you doing? I've watched so much conservative media now that now I get it. It's actually in the algorithm that it, it's just throwing conservative you. stuff at me. Yeah, it's the but same it's reason I get baby memes. Yeah, yeah, but it's like it's like they have been saying for months now that they're basically going to cut funding to Ukraine. Oh, they're so not campaigning they're, on it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and and the, and the concept being is they're going to pivot to Asia. That somehow, you know, yeah, okay. If, if, but if, but if Kamala Harris, Asia, whatever the fuck that means, Kamala Harris and um, and Biden, if they, if they were good leaders, they would have, you know, not um, they would have they wouldn't have taken their eye off the ball. You know what I mean? Sacrificed our security in the Pacific for this European conflict. It's like, bro, if if they hadn't, <laughs> if the US hadn't propped up Ukraine, like you don't think. You don't they think China's looking at that. Poland right now. Like you don't think China's looking at that, going and judging Western resolve. Of course, of course like, they are. They, they reckon the timeline dumb... for a Taiwan invasion has moved up two years as a yeah. result of this. You know, because um, they've seen how Trump is, and they'll say, "Okay, well, he's, he's said I'm not getting involved if Taiwan yeah, gets does. invaded." This, yeah, you know, have this of, like strategic yeah. ambiguity where they're like, "We might invade, we might not." If Taiwan well, gets invaded, this, Trump is like, "This is no ambiguity <laughs> whatsoever. We will not invade." And China's like, the thing. "Interesting. I wonder what he means by that." So JD Vance was like, "Yeah, yeah. Well, we want to prevent. Yeah, you know, we obviously don't want um, China to invade Taiwan. So the best way to do that is with deterrence." I was like, "Uh huh." Uh-huh. Okay, uh, what kind fine. of deterrence? Mm-hmm. Well, it's like you know, just basically spending more money in the Pacific is kind of what he was saying. Because a, a person okay. asked him about whether or not um, 
there would be a draft under a, a Trump regime if there was to be a, another world war. Cool. And J- JD Vance yeah. was like, "Oh, look, if there's a world war, we'll, we'll do. We'll we'll have to do a." A, 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 um, a draft, but well, I don't want you guys to have it. I want you guys to go and like make babies and like you know what? have it have jobs and stuff and He's like such have a, a family. Weirdo. <laughs> anyway, He's, now I'm paraphrasing, but anyway, He's so but weird. but the thing is, like, you can't. Yeah. America's at this point now where it's like you can't to, to sort of pick the two issues, like the European hemisphere, apart from. The, the, the Asian that's you know, the irony is, is they can you can't you can't, you, you, you can't say oh well, we'll sacrifice one to save the other it doesn't work like that they campaign like, that's, not, on that's this, not like, how global politics no works. he can, yeah. they campaigned on this like nativist like America first like Trump no more wars don't get they, involved in foreign don't get involved wars. in foreign conflicts but yeah. they're still keen to be involved in current foreign conflicts they're still keen for Israel to bomb the shit out of Iran. They just oh, they just care about different conflicts. That that's the only difference. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they're still war hawks. Oh, yeah. They're still the exact same George Bush conservative shitheads that they were yeah. twenty years ago. They yeah. just all those they just care about people, different wars than the Democrats care about. All those people kind of like te- like voting Trump to kind of like teach the, or like not that'll teach the deep state Democrat to teach the Democrats a lesson on not turning their backs on Israel soon, which they should have, by the way. It's like, but Trump's view isn't, like, his view is like, I want the war in Gaza to end, good, but his way of doing that is telling Netanyahu, do what you got to do. Yeah. Level it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trump's, yeah they, Trump's like, you know, they're like, oh, Kamala Harris wasn't vociferous enough in her criticism, and Trump's like, we're going to... We're going to turn the whole thing into a glass hockey rink <laughs> and we're going to skate across Gaza. <laughs> that's yeah, that's his response. Like, like, Yeah, that's why whenever they, when, yeah, when, when he said things like, I'll end the Ukraine war in 24 hours, I'm like, yeah, will you just tell Putin, oh, go for it. I'll let you take it. Yeah. <laughs> like, that sounds like his MO. Was that like Elon's promise to turn Twitter into a bank a year ago? Was that like that promise? Those oh, ironclad yeah, promises yeah. by these billionaire shitheads? Yeah. Which are definitely going to happen. Um, speaking of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu has. So we, we're all we're off the America stuff. Uh, here's the official position of the Unnatural Thank Selection <laughs> podcast: is that it's bad that Donald Trump got elected. I'm not, not surprised, but I am very disappointed. And you should go to your room, America. Benjamin Netanyahu has fired the Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, triggering protests across Israel. It is notable to me that the protests that have been triggered weren't in response to the treatment of the people in Gaza and the 40,000, yeah, 42,000 dead. Not um, the genocide. No, no, not the genocide. They're like, but that was the guy who was really interested in saving the hostages and Netanyahu isn't. And so we're going to protest. They're like, that seems to be the consensus is everyone was like, yeah, he seemed to be the one guy who was still like trustworthy mm. in the government. And now he's gone. I was like, that seems like the wrong reason right. to be yeah, protesting. They're but- all, Right, so they're all like, "Oh no, no, we, we're all on the same page." Oh no, we still want the war. We just want this guy leading it, like, yeah. <laughs> killed, but yeah, yeah, but the hostages. Yeah, yeah, that's why. Yeah. So. Yeah. So cool. All right. So yeah, speaking of masks off, I guess yeah, Benjamin Netanyahu's like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, I don't care about the hostages. This was all about wiping another people off the face of the earth. Yeah. Yep, it's what we um, want to do. There was, also, wow. cold, uh, there was like, also a lot of very public spats between them about ah, yeah. the ultra-Orthodox community. So they, there's been a long-standing exemption for members of the ultra-Orthodox community to get out of military conscription, which has been kind of like tolerable in peacetime. But now that they're at war, they're like, we really need bodies. And Yoav Gallant was... Um, wanting to conscript those people, but obviously that goes against Netanyahu, who's ultra-right far-right wing ultra-orthodox coalition. coalition that he's put together. Mm. And so that was the main thing that sort of triggered him um, getting booted. But um, mm. I mean, yeah, they've, 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 kind of, they've kind of had differing opinions about the war as well for for months now. Um, I'm surprised he's lasted as long as he has, yeah. to be honest. Gallant seems to, from, from everything I've read, it seems like he was more in a position certainly of late to conduct, you know, to want to conduct negotiations and, and get the hostages returned. That was, you know, and to find an end to the conflict, it sounded like. Um, well, his that, point was that you're arguing now from a position of strength. So so we can negotiate and get the hostages yeah. back and end it, right? Like, that's, yeah. that's the idea. And obviously that's not what Netanyahu wants. So... No, no. Yeah, we've just um, chosen yeah. more... He also just wants to start more 
conflicts. More, like, I more conflicts, them, more wars, yeah, more, yeah, more them, wars for more longer. <laughs> them doing their posts out on Twitter from, like, their official things or whatever, saying, um, uh, you know, people of Lebanon, like, get out now because we're going to go hunt. They're essentially touting the same bullshit of, like, mm. you've been human shields for Hezbollah. Mm. we're coming in, so, you know, leave now so you can be safe, and then you can come back later. It's like, yeah, but when they come back later, it'll be a concrete graveyard. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's yeah. just bloodthirsty at this point. It's, um, yeah. it's not good. It's almost yeah. like they looked at, they looked at America after 9-11 and went, oh, we can do that. I'll have one. I'll, I'll take a desert forever war. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, yeah. That's where, like, I am sympathetic to and, and in agreement with all the people kind of being like, hey, Democrats, you should have been fucking not still siding with these people. Yeah. But, yeah, it's a hard lesson to teach when the alternative is handing the keys to the country to Nazi Party 2.0. Mm. So, yeah, difficult. Speaking of difficult... All right. Let's um, come. Let's come home. Let's come to Australia, the place where we might have actually have a little bit of authority to talk about because we at least vote in these elections. I vote <laughs> early and vote often. That's what I say. Um, mm-hmm. So, um, and not for Peter Dutton. <laughs> not for Peter Dutton. Um, so it, it emerged this week that uh, Labor has uh, a policy for reducing people's hex debts um, or help debts, as they are now mm-hmm. known. So they're looking at cutting uh, 20% of people's help debts across the board uh, for those who have engaged in any sort of higher education. Now, there are some caveats with this policy in case before anyone rushes off to the bank to go and (laughs) start pulling out your money. Um, There are some caveats. So it does seem to be on the proviso that they win the next election. Um, So... Which they definitely will. Well, <laughs> remind me who's <laughs> in power now. And they are very much. So, they are, yeah, right. And the people so, who voted for them would want this overwhelmingly. So, so yeah, so they can do the thing. They could that, that they're saying they want to do. They, well, they Tom, can do it. Yeah, Tom. There's it. there's two only two weeks of the year left of city of, of the sitting year left. Only two weeks left. So, so we got so to do the social media do. thing that we cared that we oh, talked right, about. Oh right, no yeah. out, so. right, right. Of course, yeah. there's only two weeks of the of the sitting year left before Christmas. So we have to take away some people's like digital rights. In yeah, the, so we need to jam through some cyber security legislation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we've got to like turn it into a bit of a like weird dystopia. Uh, but no, no, no. We yeah, can't we actually make save those last two weeks of the year for jamming through unpopular cybersecurity legislation. So that's already spoken for. So right. Okay, yeah. perfect. Because uh, and then know. it's just like too Although, hard, and then it's like you know no one's really back before Australia Day, and then it's like oh, right, then you get more. back Febs, you're getting back into the swing of things, and then yeah, it's just and then it's like election season, so it's like probably too late. So um, but you'll vote for us, yeah, on the off chance that we win, and on the off chance that we have a friendly crossbench that allow mm, us to well, pass this policy without it getting watered down, and like on the off chance that all of those fucking things line up, you'll probably fucking vote for us, yeah, yeah, you'll vote for us, Tom, won't you? Tom, well, you'll vote for thanks, us, yeah? Thankfully, with our preferential voting system, I can kind of slightly boost you up a little bit whilst actually voting for who I want to. As you but, say, um, it's yeah. so fucking ridiculous that they, like, tease the good thing like it's a radio yeah. show. Like, and up after the break, financial <laughs> hardship relief. Like, yeah. and then listen, Tom with sports and weather. Like, listen, listen to the secret sound. What is this? The secret sound like, is your bank account getting emptied in the meantime. If you guessed Hex getting cheaper, you were right. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, it, it just seems crazy to me that in a situation where, like I said earlier, if you're Anthony Albanese and you see, because they're, they're basically running the same strategy as the Democrats, Ming Vars, like small target strategy, you know, just run to the left, be a steady, sensible pair of hands. Like, don't look at the crazy guy over there, Trump slash Dutton. Like, there's no way you want to elect that guy, right? He sucks. Um, if you run the exact same strategy, I have a feeling a lot of those same economic anxieties and a lot of those factors that went into mm. the American election that caused the Democrats to lose there would also translate to yeah. an Australian election here. We know from the latest news polls that on a two-party preferred basis, the Liberal Party is ahead, right? We know that the election, if the election was held tomorrow, Labor would likely lose. So unless they pull their fucking thumbs out and start doing some great shit they are probably going to lose the next election, which is crazy because the Liberals had a historic defeat one election cycle ago. That was oh, less yeah. than, that was two and a half years ago where they were thoroughly repudiated by the electorate. And yeah. now, 
Everyone's looking at him like, it. I'm sorry I kicked you out of bed. Do you like, <laughs> are you up still? Like, <laughs> what's yeah. what's going on? One election cycle later. It's yeah. crazy. Especially with an emboldened right wing base following the American election. Oh, God, they're going to be insufferable for yeah. the next oh, they, eight months. There were MAGA hat parties in Sydney. Stop it. It's what? Big. Like, it's fucked. Yeah. So it's all the, the, the chickens are coming home to roost. Uh, and they're like, yeah. we might do something good, maybe if you reelect mm. us. It's like, why don't you mm. give us the good things and then promise yeah. more good things, and then we'll think about it. <laughs> yeah, launching something like this kind of campaign promise, like at most six months out. From... Oh yeah, I'm sure everyone will remember this in <laughs> May next year. <laughs> like, fucking oi, Albo, you prick, do it now. Don't just say, Unless... oh. Maybe in six months I'll Maybe agree if we're good with your boys. And then in six more months. <laughs> I wonder whether this is uh, a um like a, a tester. So you you put this out in the media, you obviously announced as a policy, and then you focus group the fuck out of it. Mm. And you see how the community's reacting. If there's strong you know, depending on how they react, you then that might but depend, um, based on a few other factors they've probably got going on in the background as well, you then decide how quickly you want to call that election. Mm. Um, you know, again, yeah, it's one of those things. It's like, well, yeah, obviously they need to start. <laughs> they need to start framing things up for the next election. But I wonder whether or not, because this is probably, yeah, at most six months, at best maybe two to three months ahead of when the next election is. Um, I wonder whether this is like a a field test, you know, of like, of they're floating opinion. a test balloon. Yeah. 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 I mean, clearly that's part of it. And then, and then what's dumb to me has been all the people like complaining about fairness as though we don't already live in a society where some people to pay taxes and other people don't pay taxes. Like I think a 20, oh, yeah. 20% is like good. If you've got a big debt, that's like, yeah. works out good for you. If you've got a little debt, it works out, you know, it works out. It's, well like, for you. It's, it's, it's a good idea. Like at the end of the day, you know, you yeah. want to see, um, cost of living relief and this is one way that for, for some people it, it will have an effect oh. because if they pay off their hex debt then they're going to have more money, money in their especially in their, in their with account. the whole indexation things and all that sort of stuff like every yeah. fucking tax year I see my wife's hex debt like it's like oh it goes down a bit but then it just goes back up again and it's mm -hmm. just inter like yeah, and, so and the average hex debts have ballooned over the last you know yeah. a couple of decades like you know people have you know, average hex debts that are in the tens of thousands of dollars. Like I know my hex debt's still, you know, 45 grand. And that's on top yep. of the, you know, 30 or so grand I've already paid off between my bachelor's and my master's. Like there's a lot of debt and it's, uh, it's holding people back from participating in the economy. Now it doesn't do anything to address the system and th that allows people to charge you know, to, to no. get such absurd is, debts in the first yeah. place. Like it doesn't do anything to like properly fund it's universities. It's almost like sure they should have yeah. to fork out yeah. for help debt in the first place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's, it's like, good. I'll, I'll take five grand. You know what I mean? Like if you're going to give it to me, but like, I don't want maybe five grand in maybe six to 12 election, you know, business months. Like I, I just like, if you're going to do a good thing, do the good thing and then bank yeah. the votes. Right. Like yeah, just, maybe, do do a good thing when you're in the position to actually do the good thing. Yeah, you're like, in power. That's, like that's get the whole trying. point. That should be the whole fucking point of you campaigning to to be elected. Oh. No, but the point of campaigning, Tom, is to be elected. The point is to yeah. is is the accrual of power. The point isn't to and, yeah. and that's when you, it's at moments like this when you realize that the point of attaining power is not for them to have the power to do good things. The point of them getting elected is to be elected. Yeah, and to stop the other guy being elected, and that's and that's why a lot of people. I'm sure this is a common thread across Ameri American politics as well. That's why a lot of people are really frustrated with what you would call the political elites, is because they play this game playing bullshit. They find issues to run on rather than fix, and I think a lot of people are seeing politics and not seeing the the positive effect in their personal lives of politics they just see their gas bills and their electricity bills and their grocery bills going higher and higher and higher and they're not seeing anything else anywhere that's really making a dent in terms of offsetting those costs when government can clearly do things that would help with that problem and there have been some small things that i can credit to the labor government right like the stage three tax cuts which we were badgering them to do for months and months. And they finally, you know, finally did something. Mm. I'm seeing a little bit more money in my paycheck now. That's good. I'm seeing. Technically that was a, a coalition policy, but anyway. 
well, they, well, changed it. they expanded it, didn't they? they Labor changed basically it. changed it yeah. rather than all of the benefits accruing to, to, see, to see the top see, 5%. I don't remember, I don't yeah, remember exactly. though, right? What's like, the story? <laughs> Tell me the simple story. You know, Labor <laughs> delivered a tax cut to everyone. I want to. Be, I should be hearing that everywhere, right? Um, you know, say, okay, I got a little bit of a tax cut. I got a bit, little bit more money in my paycheck. Not, not nearly as much money as now is coming out because of my 6% interest rate home loan, but that's fine. A little bit more money in the pocket is good. Um, they increase the childcare subsidy a little bit. That's good. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it. That's all that I can housing, say. That's really housing positive. future fund. Yeah, that doesn't affect me because I own a house that I'm paying out the ass for. Like that doesn't help me. Like what are the things that are going to positively affect my life? Those are the things I can think about. What are the things on the horizon? I might get a one off five grand reduction of my debt. Maybe. It's not really an inspiring. If you message. vote for them again. If you vote for him again, maybe. Yeah. Maybe you'll Dude. get it. Maybe in six to twelve months. Right. You know, like I'm gonna have to go and remind myself everything that they. What are the things policy. that they've done? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to their website now. Uh, well, to look, speaking which is of probably, things, yeah, they, uh, yeah. Speaking of things that they may or may not do and may or may not have a benefit uh, in any way. Um, so we talked about Labor's um, thoughts around in, uh, putting an age limit on social media. Yes, this Australia, is what's absorbing their time December for yeah. an election year. Yeah, mm, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we talked about this on the show a couple months ago uh, where yeah, they were thinking of saying that no one under a certain age and that certain age was kind of up in the air uh, should be allowed on social media. Uh, they've now come to an age, uh, they say 16. That's what they've announced is in the policy that under 16 years old uh should not have access to social media how who knows at this point (laughs) that yeah they're saying like nope no one under 16 and we're going to work with social media companies to make sure that they are enforcing a method to prevent anyone under 16 what would those be i don't know face like (laughs) face recognition maybe (laughs) wow no no let's not do that uh oh showing ids no, let's not do like all the options are bad. Like, uh, let, well, the, the uh, thing it's... is, like, to verify age, you would need every person who is participating on these platforms to show age verification. And I tell you right now, if I have to put my fucking driver's license into any on you know Twitter, I don't fucking trust Elon Musk with my fucking driver's license. Are you kidding me? Like, Hell no, no, and I also... don't, you know, or Facebook or Instagram or fucking Snapchat. Or I'm, I'm, I'm going to become a hermit. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to be on the dark web. You'll never hear from me again. This yeah. podcast will be the only way that you'll be able to access my thoughts on the internet. Yeah, you, you know, I'm like, like at, at Adam's dream future of running off into the woods and just yeah. being off the grid. Yeah, basically become the Unabomber. That's the plan. Um, um, Got the you know, go bag in the background there. The <laughs> he really bag. does have yep. a go bag. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 the, the, the ways of verifying that identity all seem pretty problematic to me. The social media companies are wanting to push it off to the app stores, saying like, you know, get access to people's phone, okay. do some sort of verification there, and then that way, you know, any apps that they get will be, you know, downloaded by someone over eighteen. I mean, I know. It's just Fucking no matter Google which way you slice it, and shit. But like the uh, way, no matter which way you slice it, it's 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 a bit problematic to have a foolproof yeah. way of verifying people's identity without the government holding that data, well, the, right? So I believe the legislation's wording or something is something to the effect of the the, the social media company must take reasonable steps. And I I, I do uh, wonder whether whether it will just turn into the, reasonable strikes to again the, to <laughs> the um. Whether it will take into it, it'll just be like you know when you log on to Steam or some sort of other U eighteen bro websites. Yeah, yeah. Are you eighteen, oh, bro? Oh, and then oh, everyone yeah. goes please, definitely please, yes. Totally. When were you bro. born? Nineteen hundred seventy six. Yeah, so, so you mean so you're thirty? So it's just that scene from Hot Fuzz where he's kicking yeah. the children out of the bar. Uh, what's your birthday? <laughs> August nineteenth. What year? Every year. <laughs> yeah. So you mean they're going to use the system that we all cracked when we were thirteen to see boobies on the internet? Yeah. Like, I mean, come on. That's Apparently, ridiculous. yeah. There's it's got it's got to be more rigorous than that. But yeah, I can't imagine every single person participating and verifying their age because you're also verifying your identity, and a lot of people don't want their identity associated yeah. with their online it actually, It's just like very problematic. It would greatly damage the whole free speech angle of um, a lot of social media platforms. Mm. Like, especially I can't imagine like Twitter. Twitter going along. I know with Elon this. Musk fucking loves free speech. Like, so many people on there. The whole the reason that they're on there is because the anonymity allows them to maybe speak out opinions that they can't in whatever country they're mm. in. 
So lots of things like that. But on top of this, it's kind of kicked off. Yeah, it's kicked off a whole discussion around, um, hey, maybe banning teenagers or like younger teenagers from social media doesn't really fix any of the issues that we have of social with media. younger people on social media. More education around social media and I feel like it's a cop out. That how it works. Like, if we were going to educate, we would have been educated already. Clearly, looking at America, education is not the answer, right? So, well, well no, I think in America's case, education is the answer. It'll just take longer. <laughs> and I, we're dealing with can can kids go on YouTube, not do we elect the Nazis? I think there should be <laughs> regulations on these algorithms and how they work and the, and, the, and the rabbit holes that they push people down. I think that is a more effective way of addressing the problem than hmm. banning it. Now... That being said, I think it's probably not a bad idea to ban it. I'm just, I'm getting caught in the minutiae and the details of how it would actually work. And I just, I don't see yeah. a way of doing that that would appease my libertarian uh, kind of it, priors. Like, they're I just, talking I about having, a, you know, third party companies that would do, you know, I, I don't no, trust I, some random age, fucking age third party company. Do you? Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, if, if they're set up, if they're set up well and they have the right regulations in place, but then you have to have other regulations in place to then regulate those third party companies right yeah let's get um, more people involved that'll that'll do yeah it. <laughs> and look you know trickle down economics that the money then flows down to the next uh, another uh, uh market requirement but you know there, there are ways of of um encrypting and um dis what am i trying to say uh like splitting having, data having up. tokenized data yeah sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah um but, so or like you know like you split the, the name away from the date of birth from the kind identifier of thing. And, yeah yeah, yeah. Well, I get it. I just, I'm just incredibly, as someone who has like a good amount of digital literacy, I worry that these politicians in their fifties and sixties, like may not really grasp the world that they're bringing about with this legislation. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, the same people that are asking like, you know, the, you know, the guy who works at Google, like, why does my iPhone turn on? <laughs> it's like, well, yeah. Why is my Wi-Fi slow? I don't make that. Um, yeah. Like that's a different yeah. product. Like, but like, I feel it also sort of shows that they're um, like uh, it feels sort of weird to say, but I feel they're focusing on the negative mm. too much on social media for particularly younger people, which is definitely a thing. I definitely want to make real. that clear. One hundred percent, very real. A huge problem to sort of be worried about, but it also I think I said this at the time when we talked about this a while ago when we had fewer details, but that there's also a lot of the positive sides of things of the senses of community and exposure and access yeah, if you're to an, information. If you're an LGBTQI that, kid, yeah. you, want, you know, other access to other kids that are in your similar position and you know, you're not alone. Yeah. Like that's very validating. That I get that. And that you may be not comfortable talking to like a counselor at school about, or your friends to directly that the anonymity can be the point mm. to, seek out information that you would normally be afraid or uncomfortable mm. to look into. And it comes with risks as we've seen. So it's where like just going, no, no, teenagers just can't be allowed to use this thing. Uh, mm. Will do a lot of harm. And I've seen also a lot of uh, like some uh, people talking about it. The, the recent, I don't know if we talked about this on the show, but there was like a big like swathe of AI generated pornographic images of like girls at a school shared by like male I think student we mentioned it there was a story like, here in Australia about it and there was yeah, also a story yeah. in the US about it like yeah the exact yeah same so thing. the yeah, one here in Australia like the, the one of the mothers of one of the girls was talking about being like the banning all the kids off social media won't fix that problem won't stop that yeah won't stop that it's education to boys and men <laughs> also that, that will fix that we can do both um I, yeah. I, I'm aware, though, that there is, a, there is a plethora, a preponderance of evidence that shows how especially image-based social media is particularly negative for, um, mm. you know, increasing the rates of eating disorders amongst oh, young women. Like, 10, that, that is just, like, straight up yeah. a fact. So yeah. I, I, do. I, I think, the, the, you know, your brain, yeah. your brain is not done cooking. Your frontal lobes are not done forming until you're 25, right? So I think... To the extent that we can delay people's contact with social media until their brains are more fully formed, I think that is to everyone's benefit. But I guess the practicality of how you would actually measure that and from mm. an age you know, perspective and validating everyone's identities, I just, I don't see how you could do that in a way 
that no. also maximizes everyone else's yeah. freedom. I think I think also, it just seems a bit the, short-sighted the way they do it's it. It's also one of those things where it's like, you know, this is the wording for the legislation, right? So an electro uh, the definition of a social media service has per the Online Safety Act, an electronic service that satisfies the following conditions. One, the sole or primary purpose of the service is to enable online social interaction between two or more end users. Number two, the service allows... Uh, end users to link to or interact with some or all of the other end users. Three, the service allows users to post material on the service. Yeah, you could like be describing Telegram, any, you could be describing WhatsApp, anything. you could be describing, you know, a so that, lot of different include, services there. Does this include like, you know, messaging apps as well? The, the, like, the discussion we saying, board at your university. <laughs> yeah, like, like it, that's my point being is that like you, okay, I can see why they've written that the way they have, but mm. at the end of the day, apps are tools that, you know, are, are the modern day tools that people mm. use, you know, and there are a lot of things you could throw into that basket if you wanted to. Yeah. Mm. And there are also a lot of things you could exclude from that basket if you wanted to, depending on how you argue it, right? Mm. So this is the thing is that there's a lot of like how you could argue yeah. – this in terms of what falls under that yeah. definition is you know what be, I, you know what like, i hear funny. and what i think means that they're not going to get re-elected if they keep going with this mm. i hear minecraft mm. yeah could be a social media yeah 100%. like that's not sole purpose to do all that sort of stuff but the those other primary areas yeah, those Discord, other, like, di like the very service that we're speaking on that right we are now currently using could be but social yeah, like media Minecraft, right? you've got groups you've got you like, know all that sort of stuff yeah you know, we're also worried messenger. about exposing like younger people to like harmful content and stuff in a social in a social mm -hmm. online interaction platform um how many cod lobbies have we been in where people just shout the n-word at you mm. like yeah so oh call of mm. duty great mm. all right yeah. and, and this is the thing is that i, I think oh boy you know, like even if somehow this gets off the ground and you know comes into effect, and yeah, okay, we've got some age verification service which Merry works, Christmas. and yada yada yada. There will be there'll be ways around this. Well, and, people and will, it's, and it's so and funny you say that, Adam, because I asked my young cousin today, yeah, who's fifteen. I said, what 15. do you think about it? Like, you're right on the cusp of, you know, sort of turning 16. What do you think about it? Yeah. How do you think it will? And she goes, oh, we'll just get around it. <laughs> she was just like straight off of that. It's just like, yeah, yep. I know me and my friends, we would just, we would find ways to get around it. It's not like we're not even concerned about our ability to access these platforms. I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Word. Word. Like, you know, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just go, radical. Rad. That's no cap, fam. You know. That's bustling. It's like. Does this include news websites which allow comments like in their, you know? Hang on, wait. This know. is going to ban comment sections on news websites? I'm back on board. No, no, uh, I'm, I'm back I'm on in. board. Great. <laughs> Excellent. Perfect. No, you know what? Brilliant. That's good um, because nine out, out of the ten dumbest you things I've seen in the last month have been on comments on, you know, articles mm. and, um, and yeah. videos. So, yeah, no I'm, one can I'm reply in. to anyone else on Twitter. <laughs> it is all just all of us screaming into the void with zero feedback. Yeah, perfect. On that note, we have been screaming to the void for the last 90 minutes. We have been, we are, and we always will be our natural selection. Make sure you visit us at our salubrious home on the web, unnaturalshow.com. Make sure you follow us on all the bullshit social medias that have, do, or ever will exist that are ruining the world at our handle, at Unnatural Show. That's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and mother flipping TikTok. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at George Tsipos. You can follow me on Twitter at Tom D. Heath. And you can follow me down to the Labor Party homepage where I'm looking at uh, their their policies. Oh, yes. And um, so uh, the, the Albanese Labor government is working for Australia by supporting mm. Australians with cost of living uh, with a tax cut for every taxpayer, cheaper yep. childcare, yep, cheaper right. medicines, mm, yeah, yeah. extended paid parental leave, energy bill relief. Actually, that did the energy bill. Yeah, did. that's, okay, yeah, that's yeah, fair yeah. enough. Yep. And fee-free TAFE. Uh, yeah, they were doing. Nah, that was already a thing. I don't. They don't get credit for that. They're investing record amounts in Medicare and bulk billing. Uh, they're building new homes, investing in affordable housing, and making renting fairer. And this is just now a soapbox for the Labor Party. Sorry, guys. Yes. <laughs> Tackling climate change. 
managing how, the economy, how, how though? getting how, how, getting yeah, getting wages moving. Well, it's a hyperlink. I could I could click yeah. on it. And I'm sure there's a policy. Ah, uh, not interested. That sounds too hard. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. Right. I love your faces. We'll see you next week. And now remember, it's very important when you're in line tomorrow, you stay in line and you do not vote for Donald Trump. Wait, Wait shit. That, Wait. that was last, last <laughs> oh, week. No, Tom, it? you yeah. missed it. <laughs>